Hello, everybody. My name is Professor Scope, and I've invited my friend Olaf. Hi, everyone. From Arendelle to help me explain confocal fluorescence microscopy, or CFM. The information I will discuss was researched by my friends Clarissa, Joel, Alia, Priscilla, and Kylie. The learning objectives for this video presentation are as follows. The first objective is to explain the principle of confocal fluorescence microscopy. The second is to identify the advantages of this technique compared to other types of microscopy. Lastly, to provide a reported application of this technique from a research article. Now to start with, the concept of confocal microscopy originated in the 1950s by a scientist named Marvin Minsky. Little known fact, he was also considered the father of artificial intelligence. What do you think of him, Olaf? Samantha? <laughs> I don't even know it's Samantha. What? No, of his contribution to the theory of artificial intelligence. Oh, my theory about advancing technologies is both our savior and our doom? Okay, let's move on. Now, what is confocal fluorescence microscopy? CFM is a technique used to create a three-dimensional image of a specific portion of a sample that contains fluorescent molecules. A few examples of objects often examined by CFM are the medulla, a pollen grain, and a neuron. What are the components of this microscopic technique? A confocal fluorescence microscope is comprised of the specimen, a photomultiplier, a laser excitation source, a light source pinhole aperture, a detection pinhole aperture, an excitation filter, a fluorescence barrier filter, a dichromatic mirror, and an objective. What is the principle of operation of CFM? Olaf, do you know? Nope. This technique works by allowing light from a laser to pass through a light source pinhole aperture that focuses the light beam on a specific portion of the sample and through the excitation filter, the excitation light rays reflect off the diachromatic beam splitter mirror through the objective lens onto the specimen. Oh, okay, yeah. Fluorophores in the specimen get excited by the light causing them to emit detectable fluorescence. The fluorescence emitted from the specimen has a long wavelength that then passes through the diachromatic mirror, fluorescence barrier filter, and is focused into a second pinhole aperture into the photomultiplier tube. Yeah, why? Light originating from an in-focus plane freely passes the detector pinhole aperture, whereas light coming from out-of-focus planes is largely blocked by the pinhole, not letting it reach the detector. This helps create a sharp image of a specific portion of the specimen being examined. The target region of the specimen is scanned point by point, and then an image is produced pixel by pixel. Here, we compare a non-confocal image with the confocal image. You can see that the confocal image is clearer and has a higher resolution since out-of-focus light in the specimen was eliminated through the use of a filter and pinhole. Now, what are the advantages of confocal fluorescence microscopy? Trying to focus here. Unlike other types of microscopy, CFM takes advantage of fluorescent proteins like GFP to be used in organisms and fluoresces a sample via a confocal microscope. Fluorescent proteins were first discovered in jellyfish and observed to glow under ultraviolet light and had since been used in many different types of organisms from bacteria to household cats. CFM offers a unique opportunity to study specific parts of a cellular structure. Through the use of GFP, High-resolution structures can be obtained on the cellular level of an organism by switching the excitation light, allowing different parts of the specimen to be distinguished unlike that with other techniques. CFM can also utilize more than one fluorescent dye when viewing a sample. 
Together, the confocal microscope's two pinholes significantly reduce the background haze that is typical of a conventional fluorescence image. Let's see how CFM compares to other microscopy techniques. CFM can show the internal mechanical workings of a living cell, unlike the scanning electron microscope. Here we see an example of each. Can you guess which one was produced by CFM? Lightning round, boys against girls. Also, CFM can be used to produce high-resolution images in 3D, unlike traditional bright field microscopy techniques. After examining the different dimensions, which one was produced by CFM? We all kind of got it. Well, that's great and all, but what are the disadvantages of CFM? For starters, CFM is a sensitive microscopy technique. CFM is also restricted to staining the samples in fluorescent dye in order to best observe them, while microscopy techniques, such as phase contrast, is best used on colorless specimens and does not require samples to be harmed in any way, including fixing or staining the cells. CFM is also unable to observe the moving function of the nervous system and can only use calcium imaging instead. Calcium imaging uses calcium in order to see the movement of the nerve cells, while the GFP cannot be observed. So how is CFM applied today? Scientists use fibered confocal fluorescence microscopy, or FCFM, as a non-invasive imaging technique when performing a bronchoscopic procedure in asthmatic patients to capture the elastic fiber pattern within the airway wall. Scientists look at elastic fiber patterns in the FCFM images and compared it to the airway histology to see the relationship between the two. The principle of FCFM is based on the autofluorescence of fluorophores inside the tissues after excitation by an external laser light source, which is guided through a bundle of optical microfibers to the tip of the mini probe. Through FCFM, high quality and real time in vivo images of the airway wall are obtained by placing the tip of the mini probe onto the airway wall surface. Another advantage of FCFM is the ability to reach and therefore visualize the alveoli in vivo. The results concluded that both the histological and FCFM elastic fiber patterns had a structure function relationship between the airway wall and lung function. These results indicate that FCFM might become a real time imaging tool to estimate the type and degree of airway remodeling in chronic airway diseases such as asthma. Sadly, this is the end of the video. We hope you were able to learn a little more about confocal fluorescence microscopy. Thank you for joining Olaf and I. Thank you.